Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. And I know I said in the last video that the series is over, the series of this running app, but I want to make one more video in which I will fix some bugs that people mentioned in the comments and that I also encountered by myself. On the one hand, that is a bug if we start a new run here, click on start, cancel the run, and then add another run. Then you can see there is this finish run button even though we didn't start the run. And if I would click on this, it would basically crash because our path points list is null and it wants to, it tries to um, display that path points in our map. Uh, then another bug is that if I start this tracking here, I want to cancel that. Then this cancel run dialog will show up. And if I now rotate the device, then you can see uh, the cancel run dialog will disappear so it won't survive screen notations. And that's also something I want to fix in this video. And one guy wrote that if we take a look at our bottom navigation view and we click on the tab we are currently in, so your runs in this case, then you can see the list will reload and it will basically reload the fragment. That is also something I will fix in this video so that the fragment won't reload if we are already in it. I want to start to fix the bug that the button finish run still appears if we finish a run or cancel the run and then go back to the tracking fragment. For that, we are going to go into our tracking fragment here. And here we have that update tracking function. In this update tracking function, we check if we're not currently tracking. If that is not the case, then we set the visibility of our button finish run to visible. So in that case, if we're not currently tracking, if that is false, we show our button. If we just finished or canceled a run, then is tracking will be false too. So in that case, it will also display that button finish run. And the simple fix to this problem is to add an and here. And we also want to check if our current time in millis, so the time we basically spent with this run, if that is greater than zero L. So with this check, we just make sure that we only show that button finish run if we started the timer at least once and we're currently not tracking. But something we also need to consider here is we cannot simply do the other stuff in the else block because that will basically check or the else case will basically be that we are currently tracking and the current time in millis is less than or equal to zero L. So that won't work of course. So we need to make an else if out of that and just check if we are currently tracking. And if we now start our app like that, take a look back in our emulator here, start a new run, click on start, cancel that run. And if we now go back, you can see that button finish run isn't displaying. And as you can see, here's another bug that sometimes um, happens, which I'll also fix in this video. Even though we canceled the one, it still observes some value from the live data from our service, which we don't want, of course. So that is not really the current time. But if we click on start, then you can see it will start from zero again. But sometimes it just displays the old time. And that's also something we are going to fix in this video. But let's actually first worry about the dialog that it survives screen rotations. And for that, we need to make it a dialog fragment, which is basically just yeah, a fragment out of a dialog and that fragment will survive screen rotations by default. And to do that, we need to scroll down to our function or scroll up. I don't know where it is uh, here. Show cancel tracking dialog. Then we're going to take all of that code, cut it, go inside of our root package here or in our UI package fragments. And here I'm going to create a new Kotlin file or class for that dialog fragment, which is a class. And I'll call it cancel tracking dialog. Press enter, and this will inherit from dialog fragment. And in here, we can override a function on create dialog, in which we will just return the dialog this fragment should show. So we can remove that line, paste what we cut from our tracking fragment delete that dialog.show line here. We don't need that inside of this class and replace this val dialog here with return. So we simply return that material alert dialog builder with all those properties. And as you can see, we don't have access to that stop run function here. 
because that stop run function is in our tracking fragment and that dialog is now in our cancel tracking dialog class. And to solve that, what I will do is I will create a function here basically, which is which sets that listener, that positive button listener to this dialog. So we can set that listener from the outside and then we just pass the content stop run for that listener from our tracking fragment. So you'll just see what I do here. There's just a private var called, I'll call it yes listener, which is of type will be a lambda function. Doesn't take any parameters, but returns a unit, so nothing at all. And nullable lambda function, which, which we're going to set to null initially. And then we're going to have a function set yes listener, which will take a listener as a parameter which is also of that type. Um, yes, no parameters, returns unit. And in here, we're just going to assign our listener that we um, passed as a parameter to our yes listener. And in our positive button, we can simply use our yes listener, make that null check, call that, and actually give it a name. Yes, so that is our lambda function, our yes listener. And in here, we just want to call that lambda function. And if we then go back to our tracking fragment, to our show cancel tracking dialog function, we can create such a dialog. So cancel tracking dialog, call dot apply on that. In here, we can set the yes listener in which we are just going to call stop run, as I said. And after that, we call that show. And since this is a dialog fragment, we cannot simply just call that show. We also need to pass the fragment manager, which we can get by writing parent fragment manager. And we also need to give it a tag or we can give it a tag, which we will do here. And the reason for that, I will explain after I showed you what happens if we don't set a tag. So let's set that to null at first, run our app again, take a look in our emulator, there we go. If we now click on that plus button, start the run and click on that X. And if we now rotate the device, you can see that the dialog survives that screen rotation. But if we rotate it once and click on yes now, you can see that nothing happens. But if we reopen the dialog now and click on yes, then you can see it will work. So why is that? The problem here is that on screen rotation, our yes listener will be reset to null again. So it will trigger that positive button lambda function here, but it will see that the yes listener is actually null in that case. So it can't call a lambda function because the yes listener was destroyed on screen rotation. And to fix that, we need to go inside of our tracking fragment. First of all, we need to give this dialog fragment a tag for which I will create a constant cancel tracking dialog tag. And then I'm going to scroll completely to the top, create that constant here, const val um, cancel tracking dialog tag, set that to whatever cancel dialog. And inside of our on view created function, the saved instance state function will contain basically the information if we rotated the device, because if we check if that saved instance state is equal to null, that will return um, will return true for the first time, because we don't have any stuff inside of that saved instance state. But if we rotated the device once, it won't be null again. So what we can do here is we can check if saved instance state is not equal to null, in that case, we can get a reference to our dialog by writing val cancel tracking dialog is equal to parent fragment manager dot get or actually find fragment by tag. You can see here we need that tag now for which we'll pass our tag cancel tracking dialog tag. And we cast that as a cancel tracking dialog, which is nullable. This is important because otherwise it will crash if it can't find that. So in that case, we have that cancel tracking dialog. And that means we can reset that yes listener. So we can use cancel tracking dialog dot set yes listener and actually make that null check here. 
And in here, we just want to pass stop run. And if we now rerun our app, take a look at our emulator, add a new run, click on start, click on the X, rotate the device. And now if we click on yes, you can see now it works perfectly fine. We never get it back and the run is basically canceled. Next, let's actually quickly fix that bug that sometimes the, the old time still appears at that time text view here. That is also very easy to fix in our tracking fragment. We just need to scroll down to where we stop our run and just reset our text views text basically. So TV timer dot text is equal to zero zero colon zero zero colon zero zero colon zero zero. And that is everything we need to do for that. And as a last thing to prevent that we can reopen the fragment and it will load again by clicking on that item we are already in. We need to go inside of our activity, our main activity here, and right below that line where we set that navigation controller to our bottom navigation view, we call bottom navigation view dot set on navigation item reselected listener. So if we reselect an item basically, so if you click on an item we are already clicked on, that is already selected, then we can set a listener here for that. And I won't put any code in this. I will just put a comment here that says no operation. That is just a comment you should al um, always put in your functions if they don't do anything. But what this function actually does is it will override the default behavior of reselecting an item in our bottom navigation view, which is to reload the fragment. And by doing nothing at all in here, it won't reload the fragment. So if we now run our app, take a look in our emulator, and then if we click on that item again, you can see nothing happens. It isn't reloading the list. And also we can start a run if it loads. Yes, start a run here. It's a little bit laggy right now. I don't know why. But if we now cancel that, if we now cancel that, you can see it crashed. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, no, it, it didn't crash. It's just super slow right now. I don't know why, but if we go back, you will see that it is reset to zero, zero, basically the time zero again. And yes, those were the bugs that came to my mind and that I could find in your comments. So if you like this video, then please leave a like, comment below and have a nice day. See you in the next video. Bye bye.